Hey, all right, here we go, everyone. Lee Lowell here from SmartOptionsSeller.com. Today is Sunday, November 13th, 2022. This is the Sunday edition of the Saturday Synopsis. I uh, was busy yesterday, so I still want to get this video out to you. So we're doing the Sunday version of the Saturday Synopsis. What is the Saturday Synopsis? It's all about chart reading. I'm here to show you what's going on in the markets by looking at the charts. I'm a technical analyst. I look at the charts. I've been in this business over 30 years now. I'm a chart reader. That's how I decide to get into and out of my trades. It's different than fundamental analysis. Fundamental analysis is when you look at under the hood, basically, of a company. You look at the details, the sales, the earnings, revenue, dividends, PE ratios, all that good stuff. But to me, those are just numbers that don't mean much unless you can transfer them onto a chart. So I look at the charts, all those fundamental numbers decide which way a stock's going to go. And the charts help me decide, like I said, when to get in and out of a trade. So the Saturday synopsis of these free videos I make to, to help you see what I'm seeing on the charts, the indexes, individual stocks, and try to give you some ideas on how to use that within your options trading if you're an options trader we are options traders here at the smart option seller that's what we do we use option trades um we're basically option sellers we sell put options we sell put option credit credit spreads and then from time to time we'll sell bear call credit spreads especially in this downtrending market so in order to be a very successful options trader your number one goal is you have to figure out where a stock may or may not be headed because you can't just trade options just to trade options. Options are traded off of something, and that is typically a stock. And if you have no idea where the stock's going to go or may not go, then you have no business trading options. It's pure and simple. If you wanna trade options, you have to have an idea of where the underlying security is headed or not headed. And that underlying security in our case is the stock market. So we look at the stocks, we look at charts, we look at the stock charts and try to figure out, you know, what's going on. So here in the Saturday synopsis, we try to give you an idea of where the stock market's headed, what's been going on, some news out there in the world. And then we, then we try to come up with a game plan. All right. So that's what we do sit back and let me show you what i'm seeing on the charts and what may be coming forward so what do we do number one we always look at the s p 500 because that gives us the best overall view of the market as a whole and we use the spy the spy as our gauge that's the etf the exchange traded fund for the s p 500 trades just like the s p 500 and it's about one tenth the size you can trade it as a stock you can use options on it whatever you want to do. So we look at the, the S&P 500 first, just to get a general idea of what's going on in the market. So what you see in front of you is my chart for you newcomers. This is what I look at on a daily basis. I have my chart up here. This is the price action of, of the stock or the index. Uh, it's a daily bar chart, open, high, low, close bars. I don't use candlesticks. So each one of these lines that you see is one day's worth of trading going back about two years in time. Down here is the RSI indicator. It's an overbought, oversold indicator. I have the 80 level and the 20 level as my thresholds. And you can see it oscillates in between those highs and lows. And when it gets down to the 20 level or near the 20 level, we have to have an, we, we get an idea that a stock or index may be hitting some oversold levels. Doesn't necessarily mean it's gonna turn around and go higher right from there. It just means that, hey, you know, things are getting a little oversold. And when it gets up over into the 80 level, that means things are getting a little overheated. The stock may be ready for a pullback or a pause or something. And it's a 14 day look back period here, right here. You can see 14. And on the chart up here, I have three moving averages. I have a 200 day moving average right up here. I have a blue 20 day moving average. And then this one is the 50 day moving average, 20, 50 and 200. Those are three very widely followed moving averages. And, and when a stock or index is, is moving, it will, those, those, those moving averages tend to act as magnets. Sometimes you can see, um, where a stock movement will, will get rejected or it will bounce right on a, on a certain moving average level. So we use those as, you know, one of our tools to help us decide, you know, whether a stock is hitting some resistance or hitting some support and we use these channels you can see this inverted v here these are lines that i draw myself 
to tell me which way the market's moving, which way that's trending. You can see this long channel right here where the market from basically October, uh, this was October 2020, right here, no, October, November, just had this nice slow move up all the way for about a year till October 2021. So what's happening in the market? What's been happening in the market? Well, if you follow the market, you know that basically in January 1st of 2022, we've been in this downtrend. Market's been going down basically the whole year. We've had some, you know, fits and starts. It jumps back up. And but eventually it has kept falling all of 2022. So where are we now? Well, we've had this nice inverted V here. We're in the middle of June. We finally got a reprieve from the selling. Went up for about two months to the middle of August and came all the way back down and actually made a new low here. This was pretty recent. This was October 13th. I've talked about this in some of my prior videos. This was what I call, we had one of these washout days where the market gapped open lower on the day, made this big move down, but finished the day higher. So it turned all the way around and finished higher in the day. That, from what I've seen over the 30 years that I've been in this business, when you have a move like that, a gap lower, pushes lower, and then reverses and closes higher on the day, that is a pretty good telltale sign that you have at least a bottom, uh, you know, a pretty decent bottom that's probably in place for the time being. And since that day, October 13th, about a, a month now, we have not yet retested that low. So keep this, this area in mind. We hit about $348 on the SPY, and uh, we have not retested it since you know a lot of people are calling for this is just a bear market bounce it's going to retest the lows at some point that that may happen i'm sort of leaning against that and i'll tell you my reasons why number one this was um the market has been expecting the u.s federal reserve to raise interest rates and they have been raising interest rates okay so the market typically the stock market typically does not like when interest rates rise because that means people can get better returns on their money from fixed income security. So the theory goes people will take their money out of the risky stock market and put it into CDs and bonds and treasuries and all that where they can get a fixed, you know, a fixed return. And as interest rates rise, that fixed return gets higher. So people want more safety. That's the theory. But so we know that the, the Fed has been raising interest rates and um, we hit this low. And so I just think that we were in the last quarter of the year, which is typically bullish companies, companies will pivot and they'll figure out ways to sell their products. They, they know that they're coming into a, you know, a, a different environment, uh, depending on people's spending and they'll figure out ways to make money. So the earnings seasons ha has this, the latest earnings season, Q3 earnings season, which we're still undergoing right now, has not been that bad, except for the tech sector. Some of these large tech stocks ha have been hit pretty hard, and we're gonna go over some individual stocks. But in the meantime, we hit this low, and we've just been going up since. And now let's break it down for like the last week or two. We had the US midterm elections here, uh, on Tuesday this past week. And what we saw was the market had come down here to make, you know, this was, so here's Friday, two days ago, Thursday, uh, Wednesday, Tuesday. So down here, we, we pushed down because whatever reason, the market wasn't too happy with how the U.S. midterm elections were coming out, and it looked like the market wanted to go down right here. But on Thursday this week, we had the inflation numbers come out, and it showed inflation had, had it was getting better, meaning prices were coming down. And so people were happy about that because you're led to believe that the, the Fed in the U.S., will not keep raising interest rates as aggressively as they have been. Maybe they'll start to pull back, you know, smaller interest rate rises or no, no rises as, at all. And so that really sparked this bullish move in the market Thursday and Friday this week. Look at these two days right here. Thursday and Friday, big moves. So here's where we closed on Wednesday, all the way down here. We closed all the way down here on Wednesday. Let me open this up a little bit more. 
we closed all the way down here on Wednesday. And then Thursday, we gapped up. You can see this big air pocket here, this white space. Here's where we closed, opened up here, pushed higher on Thursday, and even Friday on uh, November 11th, pushed even higher again. So the SPY finished $398.51. Get a little closer here, you can see. So we almost hit the $400 level. I just think that the bears have been burned a little bit the last two days, Thursday and Friday this past week, and had to you know, cover their short position. So the market is definitely moving up. The market has got some upwards momentum here, especially since we got over this 390 level right here. 390 was basically on the way down. Let me pull this down a little. So as the market was coming down here, 390, roughly 390 was acting as support. Bounced, came back down again, but got through it. So now on the way up, showing a little bit of resistance here you can see these few days here had resistance was able to get up through it again come back down had some support here again so you can see there's support resistance support until it broke through again now on the way back up this time this little section here 390 was going to once again act as resistance but this past thursday and friday it broke through it up to 398 so i just think the market's got enough momentum that you know coming into the last quarter of the year which is typically bullish you know businesses are pivoting they're realizing how to how to price their products in you know this tougher environment and we had this low that was made here technically this was a a classic you know blow off low it can also happen on the upside, but in this case, it happened on the downside, and we've just powered up since. So I think we've got momentum on our side for the market as a whole, the S&P 500 moving up, which is good. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ represented by the triple Qs. The NASDAQ has been the weakest of the three main indexes, which is the S&P 500, the Dow Jones, and the NASDAQ. So the NASDAQ, you can see also here Thursday and Friday, had a had a good day, powered higher. But, you know, we were getting back down to these this low here, $260. This was that day I'm talking about that blow-off low on October 13th. Gap lower, went lower, and finished higher, and started moving up again retested almost retested the low but we powered higher so the nasdaq sort of getting off its butt and we're going to look at some of the bigger individual stocks that make up the nasdaq to show you why it's been so weak let's look at the dow jones we can use the dia the diamonds i'll move myself here for a second so you can see right here dia that's the symbol okay the dow jones has been the strongest of the three look at this power move higher now you can see we hit a double bottom here here was that move um this was sort of towards the end of september right here and this was that other day october 13th that i've been telling you about so we had a double bottom that's when you hit a same low two times and bounces just look at this incredible bounce that we've had on the dow jones and here is thursday and friday last week so we've almost come back to touch this last high here in the middle of august if it can surpass this high we'll draw a line here just to you know keep an eye on things this is the next line in the sand here that high that we hit back in uh the middle of august let's get a straight line here if we can there we go um so the next line in the sand will be roughly what price is this i'm going to take a look here this high was roughly three hundred and forty three dollars right here this day right here this high so we're 337 and change so we've got you know a little bit more to go but that could be the next line in the sand for the dow it might hit some resistance here because we've come up a pretty good strong way uh typically a market has to regroup itself take a rest it's gone up pretty good so this might be some resistance here for the dow but the dow definitely looking stronger let's take a look at some individual stocks and see what's been happening now we'll, we'll go to the nasdaq first because some of these big tech stocks are the things that's been holding the nasdaq back now this is apple apple had the v bounce and then the the inverted v drop so it's got a lot of movement i mean that's just some big movement for apple up you know down up down um 
you know, 135 on Apple seems to be a level that has some, some magnet to it. It's been catching that level here three times. You can see one, two, three, and even back here, it was flirting around that 135 level. So right now, and we're going to draw a line to, and drawing some support lines and resistance lines is a good way to kind of give yourself an idea of where a stock may gravitate towards. Okay, and up here was a line that I must have drawn in the past. So it was roughly around 150 uh, was an area that you can see it stopped here. It, it, it moved around here, around here a little bit, and then on the way down. So, and you can see it stopped right around 150 on Friday, right there. So, you know, between right now, 135, 150 seems to be that range until we break out. And, you know, Thursday and Friday was pretty good for Apple. It, it rallied almost $10 a share over two days. So that's pretty good. Um, but, but you know, it's it's come down quite a bit. So Apple has a little work to do. Amazon, we're going to look at some of these bigger big tech stocks. Amazon, where's my Amazon here? Okay, Amazon. Uh, you know, the Amazon, the tech big tech earnings came out roughly, you know, two weeks ago or so. Maybe a little earlier in um, later in middle of October, third week of October. So it's been a few weeks now. You can see the big gap down here and it just powered lower. New low right around $85, $86 for Amazon. Fell through this $100 level, the support level that we drew earlier. So the $100 level will act as right now some resistance. Maybe it's around $102. Let me see what I got here. This is about 101 150 160 so right under $102 that's the that's the resistance line now you can see before it acted as support one two three four five six almost seven times it bounced and now as it broke through now the 102 101 and change is going to act somewhat as resistance for the mean in the meantime if it breaks through there and goes higher, then it'll just keep powering higher. It's got the 20-day moving average here, 50-day moving average here. Those will be the next areas of, of resistance. But it had a nice turnaround Thursday and Friday this week. But Amazon still, it got hit pretty hard. Let's look at Google because Google got hit pretty good too. Amazon, Google, um, Facebook, or Meta, Apple, the FANG stocks all got hit pretty hard. That's why the NASDAQ has been down so much. Same thing. Google just had this nasty move down since it released its earnings below $85. And you can just see this big move down. So we had draw this line before this support slash resistance line right around, you know, 102 as well. And, um, you know, it's trying to get back up there. So Amazon, Google, Apple, let's look at Meta slash Facebook. Same thing. These these four tech stocks, you know, comprise a huge part of the NASDAQ. So when these stocks move, the NASDAQ itself is going to move as well. So here is Meta was in this channel and then just started crashing down and had the big gap lower on its earnings. Got down to, let's see what the low here was, $88.41, $88.41. But it's had the little move up recently because the rest of the market's been moving up it's tagging the 20-day moving average line right here it's getting into some oversold areas so these biggies now netflix which is also part of that fang group actually has been doing a little better uh we had 250 dollars as the resistance line right here this long line it was in this channel and if it could blast through 250, it was going to go. And that's what it did here. You can see rally all the way up over $300 a share. This move right here came back down to test once again the 250 level just this week and bounce Thursday and Friday. So Netflix looking good. Bounce down to the support here at 250 and moving higher. Closed on the high of the day. You can see that the little dash mark on the right side of the bar little teeny dash mark is where it closed for the day. So the close is very important because that shows you where all the momentum is. So Netflix seems to want to get itself in gear, still has these big gaps, uh, a, lot of, a lot of room to go all the way back up to the highs of $700 a share. But it looks like it's, you know, starting to do its thing. So the NASDAQ, a lot weaker than the Dow and the S&P 500. 
Uh, but but there's a point where stocks just come off too much. They just they just get too cheap. You know, big players will find value in these stocks, even if even if everyone thinks we're you know this is just a bear market bounce. Um, you know, we go back to the SPY. A lot of people are saying, you know, you're getting another chance here. You're getting a second chance or a third chance. Sell your stocks now because this is just a, you know, a bear market bounce and we're going to drop again down to the lows. Do I think that's going to happen? I don't really think that's going to happen. I mean, we can always pull back, but I don't think we're going to test this low here at the 348 number. There's been a lot of momentum so far. We're in the bullish fourth quarter of the year. Earnings are still pretty good for a lot of companies. And the market's come off a long way. You know, people people want to get in. There's a lot of people sitting on the sidelines, a lot of dry powder. So people are starting to buy up a little bit, considering that these inflation numbers starting to come down a little bit. So we'll see what the Fed does at their next meeting. But anyway... Things look pretty decent overall for the general market. Let's look at some other stocks. Now, remember, if you're playing options contracts, you, you need to have a gauge of where do you think where you think things are going. Uh, in our newsletter, we sell put options, which is a more bullish strategy. This is Nike. Uh, everyone knows Nike. It's a stalwart. It's a name brand. One of the best brands on the planet. Just been coming down, just like the rest of the market since the beginning of the year. Coming down, coming down, coming down. We had sold a put option because we, well, I saw some bullish activity down here, and uh, it's been working out for us. Look at this big move last Thursday and Friday. Big move for Nike. Rallied over, um, closed down here is Wednesday. So it closed right around uh, $92 and finished yesterday at 106 or Friday at 106 So it rallied $14. That's a big move for Nike. Worked for us. When the stock market goes up or the stock goes up, that helps our, our our put selling position. So we're doing pretty good on that. So that's Nike. Nike looking pretty good here. What else have we done? Um, let's look at some other big stocks. Um, let's go to the list here. Let's go down this list. Microsoft. Uh, Microsoft's also part of that 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 Nasdaq list. That got Microsoft got hit pretty good after its earnings, but has rallied back pretty good. So. It's still in this downtrend, but looking to looking to move up here. All right, uh, keep an eye on uh, Microsoft, Intel starting to turn up. So the tech sector, the the I'm sorry, the chip sector. AMD is one of my favorites. We just put out a play on AMD on Friday. Can't tell you what the exact trade is because it would be unfair to our paying customers. But just know that we've got into a naked put sell on AMD and you can see the power move higher. That's a good move for us. That works for us. AMD may be finally finding a bottom here. It hit 160, came all the way back down to under 60, maybe finding a bottom here. We're taking a stab. AMD, like the chip sector, um, Intel is also part of that sector, but it's not as big a player as it used to be. So I'm not that big of a fan of Intel. I like AMD better. Also, NVIDIA, another big chip player. If I can get the symbol right here. NVIDIA, bouncing off the lows. Went down to about 110. Now it's back over 160. So that's a big move for NVIDIA. But still, you can see the general downtrend. Micron, another chip stock, has, has had a nice move. Okay, rounded bottom here big move higher still in this downtrend but has gotten got bounced out of the downtrend you can see the upper leg here of the channel moved above it so that's a good sign we like that we like when stocks move outside of the channel because now a new trend may be emerging so you have to look for these things let's see what else we've got other big stocks um oracle uh, it's had a nice bounce off the bottom here. Now, another thing I want to bring up is what's called the W pattern. You can see the W pattern on a lot of different stocks. If you can just envision this W right here as you follow my mouse, there's a W. Okay. And when, and when the stock moves above the middle part of the W, which was right about, let me get the line here, you know, right about here roughly. Okay. Then you can start to see some good bullish activity. So you got the W, and as, once it moved above the midsection here, maybe $67, look at this power higher. 
So the W pattern is something to keep an eye on. It's a bullish bullish pattern, especially when it's coming on the lows. When you have a, a stock that's been moving lower and you're on the low area and you see a W forming, that's usually a pretty good sign. Also, um, we've got Warren Buffett, the, the Berkshire Hathaway Class B shares. You can see this larger W here, right? You can see the W forming. And once it gets getting above this midsection, right around 307, 308 maybe, that could be the point where it could really get to go. You can see here, Thursday and Friday, so it got above, closed above this mid midline right here. And it's gotten above the 200-day moving average again. It's also above the 20-day the and 50-day. So Berkshire Hathaway looks like it's got clear selling. Maybe to take out $360, which is the, the previous high. I like this pattern here, this W pattern. Um, if the rest of the market keeps going, Berkshire Hathaway is going to keep going as well. Which brings me up to my next point. Um, you go to our website, smartoptionseller.com. We have our free ebook on how to sell put options and what put selling is all about. Put Selling Basics ebook right here. Go to our website. Click on the Put Selling Basics ebook, scroll down, put your name and email address in here. We'll send you an email. It's got a link to the free copy. It's all about put selling, why we love put selling, and why it's one of the main gigs that we do. I love put selling, so that's what we do. Also, about Warren Buffett, if you go to the More tab here, um, actually, I'm sorry, Services tab, we have our two newsletters here, and if you click on the Shop link, it's going to bring up this report that I wrote uh, about another option strategy using Warren Buffett as our as our um, way to use the strategy and, and, and riding the coattails of Warren Buffett and how to buy him for pennies on the dollar. It's how to piggyback Warren Buffett. It's not free, but you know if you're interested in a different strategy on how to you know take advantage of, uh, of you know the Oracle of Omaha as he's called, we all know Warren Buffett, one of the most successful investors of all time. If you want to piggyback him for pennies on the dollar, think about taking a look at that. Okay, so um, here's the Berkshire cla class B shares trading around 309 and change. Um, could be could be ready to keep going. And also, once again, we were talking about the W pattern. Let's look at some other stocks here. Uh, what else we got? Procter and Gamble, uh, Walmart. We always like to talk about. You know, Walmart, the biggest physical retailer on the planet. I just shopped at Walmart yesterday. Had to buy some stuff. You know, Walmart is good for cheaper prices. You know, things have gotten really expensive. And, and you go where your dollar's treated best. And if you can get better deals, you go for it. At least that's what I do. I don't have a problem with shopping with Walmart. I love the company. I love the stock. And Walmart's just been in this nice uptrend since the summer. Okay, so Walmart's looking pretty good. Uh, we're coming into the holiday season, and you know they're going to be selling a lot of stuff. So we'll see how they do in the first quarter of the year when earnings come out. Uh, that includes the holiday, the holiday season. Disney, another, another name brand that everybody knows and loves. Disney got hit pretty good this week. Had earnings, had the big gap down, had fallen through the hundred dollar level, fell through ninety dollars. I have some shares of Disney that I'm holding for the long run. Probably should have bought some more here, but I didn't. I was waiting for some more follow through to the downside, but it bounced back just like everything. So maybe keep an eye on Disney for the long run. Uh, for those of you who like Disney, what else? Tesla. Let's talk about Tesla. Oh my gosh. And we all know that Elon Musk has finally taken over Twitter. Twitter is no longer a publicly traded company. Um, I don't know. Some stuff's happening at Twitter. Who knows if it's going to be able to uh, um, survive but tesla in the meantime has been falling lower falling lower ha was trading around that 300 level for a period of time and has just just dropped dropped under this last support area of 200 and, you know 12 dollars or so and down to 180 who knows what's going to happen with tesla it's hard to get a gauge people love tesla but but you know with elon musk selling 44 uh, he bought Twitter for 40, uh, was it $44 billion? He had to sell a lot of his, some of his Tesla stock, not all the stock, of course. He's still the richest man on the planet. But um, the Tesla stock's been going down. 
And that's because of what happened with Twitter, I believe. So I really don't have a have a say on, you know, which way I think Tesla's going. It's just a crazy stock. It's a lot of gyrations, but you know, some people love it. I don't really have anything to offer as far as which direction. Um, let's look at healthcare stocks is also been pretty good. Uh, here's Eli Lilly. Here's the symbol L L Y. Eli Lilly just been going up. Let's look at Johnson and Johnson. I'm uh, just kind of hanging around the middle, not really going up or down. Merck, uh, been going up, going up over, you know, bottom left to top right. That just shows you a stock's been going up. Um, Pfizer, you know, these are the big healthcare stocks that we watch. Uh, just kind of meandering around like, like Johnson & Johnson. And what's our other one? Bristol Myers, Bristol Myers, BMY, you know, been moving up too. Hit a, I think this was an all-time new high here. Let's see if that was an all-time new high. Let's go to the monthly chart. Yeah, all-time new high above $80 just this week alone. So the healthcare industry, pharmaceuticals, I, I love the sector. If you want to get them all in one shot, you use the XLV, XLV right here. Um, you know, kind of meandering, but if you want to get all these in one shot, you, you get into the XLV. We have sold some put spreads on the XLV, which is a bullish strategy. Um, we've, we've done that uh, a couple times in our spread newsletter. So that's the healthcare industry. What else we got? Verizon is also a stock that I always keep an eye on. Still not ready to pull the bullish trigger yet on Verizon. Just keeps going down. Kellogg is another stock that uh, I, I, I've got an eye on here going up pretty good. But then just, just the last two weeks, it's fallen pretty good. Fell below the 200-day moving average. So I'm keeping an eye on Kellogg for a possible bullish opportunity here. Maybe sell some puts on Kellogg. Uh, PayPal and Square, uh, the payment sector, maybe they're finally getting their act together, scraping along the lows here. But you can see the downtrending 200-day moving average, and the 50-day and 20-day, they're all starting to converge here. If PayPal can get above around $100 a share, it probably can start the, the next ascent higher. It's come down a long way. Let's look at Square. Same industry. Online payments. Same thing. All the way down. Scraping along the lows now. It's had a pretty good last couple of days. Got the 200-day moving average here. So um, PayPal and Square need... It's got some work to do, but could be coming to the bottom. Could be finally seeing a bottom there. Keep an eye on that that industry. Costco, um, just kind of meandering around. McDonald's, just been a strong stock. Look how it bounced off 230, went all the way up to 280. Doing pretty well overall. Still moving up in the general direction. I also like Pepsi. These McDonald's and Pepsi, two good dividend paying stocks. If you hold for the long, long run, it will reward you bottom left, top right. Pepsi still going up. Comes ha, Has a lot of gyrations, but still moving in that general upwards direction. So you want to look for some good dividend paying companies as well. What else we have? Home Depot uh, moving up. IBM moving up pretty good. Google, we looked at Clorox and Colgate. You know, these are your these are your home goods companies, products that we buy all the time. Colgate and Clorox make all those products. Oh, Coca Cola. Always want to bring up Coca Cola. Had the nice low here. Got oversold on the RSI. Bounced and coming up to resistance on the 200-day moving average. If, if Coca Cola can get above 62, should be good to go and make a run at new highs, all-time new highs again. So Coke bounce pretty good. And then lastly, we have Con Ed, and we'll look at Southern Company. Utility companies, utility companies usually do pretty well. Um, been moving up, but had this nice move down. Nice move down. Had a double bottom on the RSI here. Bounced right here, you can see. And I got, I bought some shares on the lows here, and it's been moving up pretty good. Southern Company. It's another utility. We actually sold some puts on Southern recently. I feel that it just came down way too far, got oversold, sold some puts waiting for the bounce. So it's me entering around. Sideways actions is just, is, is just as good as upward movement when you're selling puts because of that time decay. So we like to sell puts after a quality stock has moved down pretty hard and, um, and then 
you know, if it gets oversold, it's going to bounce, which is good timing for a put selling position. So that's really about it. That's all I've got. Let's go back to the SPY real quick one more time. Get some action plan. Um, moved good. Moved good above the 390 level. Closed at 398 and a half. I like the momentum that I'm seeing this week. Um, you know, it should be a status quo week. These midterm elections are, are mostly over and figured out. And, um, you know, we don't have any major reports coming out this week. I don't think that should really push the market one way or the other. So we've got this bullish momentum. Let's see if it carries up to at least the 200 day moving average this week, which is around $407. So that's another eight and a half dollars or so um, to hit that could be done this week. So keep an eye. I, I think, you know, the bulls just have control right now. Other people are saying it's a bounce sell your positions because it's going to fall back down again. I don't think that's going to happen before the end of the year. And it may not happen at all. This may be the low for good for a long time. The 348 number. We'll see. You know, nothing's guaranteed. I want, I don't want to put anything out there as a guarantee hundred percent, but I do like this momentum. So I think the S S and P 500 is, um, you know, it's got more upside momentum than downside at the moment. So we'll see. All right. That's all for me. Don't forget to go to our website, get the free ebook report. Take a look at that Warren Buffett report as well. Give me a thumbs up in this YouTube video. I try to make these free videos, try to help you see what I'm seeing using the charts as a way to get into and out of trades, especially your options trades. You got to know how to look at the charts. Um, you know, send me an email, leave me a comment. I'm always here to answer. And, um, so next week here in the U S is, um, We've got Thanksgiving holiday coming up pretty soon. So we'll see if hopefully if I'm around next Saturday, I'll make another video. If not, you know, soon enough after that. All right, everyone. I uh, wish everyone a good weekend and have a great trading week ahead. This is Lee Lowell signing off.